recording. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to get started. Um, just going to move my screen. So, phonics and reading. Some of this will be very familiar to you because your children have been in our school a year. Um, so some of it is a bit of repeating, but I don't think it hurts to be reminded of some of the things that we're doing. Or in case you missed um, my workshop last year, um, it might be something new to you. Um, and I'll talk specifically about year one as well, because I split the workshops this year to represent each year group, because I think that's just better. So you know which stage your child's at within the um, phonics and reading scheme. So as you'll all know, I will skip this quote. We are a Little Wondle Letters and Sounds school. So we took on that scheme last year. So we're now in our second year of using the scheme and we're really happy with it. We think it's, um, we're really pleased with the scheme. We can really see the impact it's had on particularly your children as they were our first year group to do it in full and from the start. Um, and we feel like it is having a really positive impact on their children and their outcomes. So I'll talk to you first a little bit about phonics and then I'll come on to reading. So phonics is all about making the con connections between the sounds of our spoken words and the letters that are used to write them down. So it's a real um, important strategy or skill for the children to impact their reading, but it also helps with their writing as well. So we teach phonics in daily short sessions. It's taught every day um, and there's a real specific order that the sounds are taught in. So lots of your children will have learned all, a lot of these sounds already. And it's really important to us that we are correctly pronouncing the different phonemes, the different sounds. Um, and we'll come on to that a bit later and some places you can go to to help you because it's not always easy. Sometimes you might see some sounds to you and you think, what does that sound like? I need to know. So I'm going to point you in the right direction for that. And then there's lots of repeated practice and revisiting and going over things um, just so we ensure that that knowledge is embedded. Just let that person in. So your children will have already visited these sounds in foundation stage. Um, we don't have loads of whizzy resources with Little Wondle. It's very basic. We have some nice flashcards, some nice images to help um, the children to learn um, those sounds. Um, and we use whiteboards and pens, but it's, it's, we don't have loads of resources. We don't do songs. We don't do loads of actions because we don't want to overload your children um, there's lots of research into cognitive overload and that we don't want to see that. We just want them to learn the, no the knowledge of these sounds so that then they can it can support their reading and then their writing. So again, these are sounds that your children will have visited in year one. And we're moving now on to some of the digraphs, which is two letters and one sound that your children will have started learning, but will be learning more now within year one. And with the digraphs, you get a little saying with it to help the children learn it. So book a book or sheep in a jeep. And that's just another way of them remembering and learning the digraph. Eventually those get taken away and they just can recognise those digraphs and recognise them not just on a flashcard, but also within words that they're reading. We do lots of reading of words. These are examples of ones that they will have learned in foundation stage. Just let that person in. And then more so these are sorts of the words that they would have met in foundation stage, but we'll be going over and having some more tricky ones, tricky, more, tricky vowel digraphs in year one. We also always make sure that we do tricky words as part of our phonics session. So tricky words are words that can't always or easily be sounded out or segmented. They often have some unusual sounds in them, but there's clues in there. I always say to the children, the initial sound is usually a really good clue and it helps you along the way, but they're just a bit more tricky. And we just have to learn them as a whole. And there are more, there's words for 
specifically for year one and then there'll be specific words for year two that we'd like them to learn as well. There's um, some, there's a really great video on the Little Wandle webpage, but I'll come to that later because um, there's loads of good things on there for you. And I think it's the best place to go to if you want to know more, you want to just see how we're teaching it. Um, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. And terminology. So we do use this terminology with the children. I'm sure your children have come home and used some of these words. And um, they're fantastic at learning new words. It's a bit like they love learning very technical dinosaur names that we can't always pronounce. So um, it's the same with any topics. They like to be extended in their um, use of vocabulary. So phoneme is the sound that you can hear. It's the sound the letter makes. So I always think it's, it's what you can hear. The grapheme is what you can see. So that's the letter. So when we're writing, it's more about the graphemes. A digraph, which I've mentioned before, is two letters, one sound. A trigraph is three letters, one sound, like I-G-H, which makes I. Then we have split digraphs, which your children will cover this year in year one. And they are the, uh, they're the long vowels, but they're split by a consonant. So, for example, in the word make. And then we have the words blend and segment. So we blend the words together. For example, if I segment cat, it's cat and then I say the word as a whole I'm blending it together to say cat so you're without even realizing it you'll have been doing lots of segmenting and blending when reading with your children so as I mentioned earlier there is a clear teaching order and we do have this available on our website but I'm also going to show you where you can look at it on the little wandle page which I think is probably um, a better and easier place to visit and then the, this shows you the progression from reception, but all the way up to the end of year two. And, and the idea is that your children will have finished the program by the end of year one. They will be fluent readers. Not always the case, because as I'm sure you'll be aware, if all the children learn at different speeds and rates. But our aim is to try and get them to the end of that program. And any children who may be finding a particular unit or a particular phoning difficult we would do keep up work with them but sometimes it does need revisiting when we get to year two again that's available on the little wandles website so how do we make the learning stick well we just do lots of repetition and practice we share things with you you will have seen the new phonics homework that's coming home so you know what we've covered that week and it's uh, things that you can do you know, cooking the dinner in the car. There's not meant to be work heavy, but little and often for young children is how we find that you can get that learning to stick. So that's the phonics. I realise I'm rattling through this. I'll give an opportunity at the end for questions. If you're not happy to ask here, you can always email more than email me. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. Um, reading in school. So as you'll be aware, we have reading practice sessions in school, that's what we call them, where we read in a group. Um, they're timetabled three times a week and they're led by a trained teacher or teaching assistant. And the groups aren't any larger than six. Sometimes they're a bit smaller. It depends on the number of children in that class, but also the group. And then that book, as you know, comes home each Friday. I'll come on to that in a minute. I'll come on to reading at home in a minute. So we do an assessment every six weeks on the children. It looks a little bit like the one on this slide. So there's lots of sounds that will have been covered within phonics sessions. This is um, a reception one. And then some words that we practice the children. And that helps us identify which stage book to put your child on. Oh, that person's gone that tried to come in. It's not always I um, the assessment. I, I'll be honest, I, it's OK. It's not fantastic because it's very different skill reading some letters on a page and words to reading a book. So there is a little bit of um, 
professional judgment that we have to use when we're setting the books for the children and also we're always reviewing it feeding back to each other to make sure the children are on a book that's appropriate but we need to make sure that the children are able to access the book it has to be at their correct phonic stage okay um so it's about making sure that book is at the right level so they know all the sounds and the tricky words and they're able to access it. Ideally, we don't we want them to be reading 95% of that book so that it's only about 5% of the words that they may be struggling with. So it's a very small percentage you really want them. And if you feel your child's really doing brilliantly or is really struggling, then that's always good to feed back to the class teachers. So our three sessions in school have a different focus and I think for us we were a bit skeptical about doing three week reads of the same book in in school last year but we wanted to give the scheme a really good go and actually we can really see the benefits of it now for their fluency but also because of the other skills that we're teaching within those sessions so the first session when they first get that book is always about word reading decoding going through the phonic sounds that are, are focused within that text and the first read the children always find the text I suppose a little bit more challenging then when we get to the second read they're much more familiar with it they know what to expect so we do still practice all the words the sounds we read it but then we do some prosody which is where we're doing some intonation and expression and the reason for doing that is because it's to help them develop their reading for meaning and they love doing it I'm sure they love doing funny voices at home with you read and, and like I say they're really good at it and, it and it makes it more fun the third session which is really key so they're really familiar with the book by this time but we still do the sounds the words um, but when the children have read the book we do some comprehension with them we do some um, retrieval we do some inference um, and that's really important for them because as they go through to year two and beyond comprehension becomes key to their success in reading so reading at home so it's really reading at home is really important it's important to help them understand words and senses, develop their vocabulary, develop their listening comprehension skills. It's a fantastic way of um, helping them with all the areas of the curriculum. If they can read, they can access everything. So the book's going home. So you'll have your reading practice book that comes home every Friday. And they have read that in school three times. So it will be and should be quite easy for them to read just to you and it's it's a book to celebrate it means they have real success in their reading and particularly for some children that's really important because if they find it difficult and they're struggling with all of the words they're not going to develop that love of reading so but that one is for really it should be a pleasure for them to read and lovely for you to listen to to show how well they're doing but we also send other books home because we appreciate that you want to support and help with their reading and we know it's so important for the children to read a range of books to come across lots of different words lots of different styles of books so you also get sharing books to read with your children and we ask that you read as often as possible the ideal is every day but I'm a mum too of a six and nine year old and I, I don't read every day because with clubs that they attend, swimming, beavers, cubs, um, all sorts of things, I just can't always find the time. And that's the same for you. So we, we ideally say at least three times a week. If you can read every day one week, then fantastic. But we know that clubs and all those other enrichment activities at home are equally as important. Or if your child's feeling under the weather, or they're feeling like they're really tired from a day at school, then we don't want you to feel like you have to get that reading done and ruin your family time at home. So we'd really love for you to, like I've said before, listen to your child read their 
um, lessons, their reading practice book. There's loads of fantastic titles, but again, it should be for you to celebrate and enjoy with them at home. I'll, sh I'll come back to this slide because I want to show you this on the little Wendell, Wendell web page because I think it's a much better place to see it. But there's a, some support if you're struggling with knowing how to pronounce some of the um, phonic sounds when you're reading with your child. And then when you're reading with your child, this could be the library book or the sharing book, which is our home readers. They're, they, they're not um, ordered the same as the reading practice book. So there may be sounds or words in there that your child hasn't come across. So that, that's where you might need to support them. But again, it's to give them that wealth of reading. But you can use your own voices to practice that prosody, ask questions. Um, talk is so important, not just the reading of the words. And then my last slide, one of the greatest gifts adults can give is to read to children. So I'm just going to end this presentation. I just want to show you the little Wandle web page. Because I think that's a really useful place to go to. I'm just going to switch my screens. We go. Can everybody see my web page? I can see a nod, that's great. I can see one person. So when you go into little wandle letters and sounds .org .uk, there's a section at the top that says for parents. And within that, you've got some support for phonics. So you'll see the videos here, and it's the children pronouncing the sounds for you. But there's also, I want to highlight the phase five section, which is taught in year one, and that's the one that you'll be focusing or your children will be focusing on this year. So that's a new addition that would be really useful for you because in year one, the phase five sounds, it's revisiting all those vowel digraphs, but the alternative pronunciations. And below you'll see the sheets that you may have seen last year. And within that, there's a year one sounds. So I've opened that up to show you. Has, can everybody still see my screen where I've switched to some sounds? So in here, you'll see that you'll see the grapheme, the catchphrase, the pronunciation phrase, but also the other ways that phoneme can be represented. They're the, the other ways that your children will be learning. And our language is so difficult because there's a rule, but then there's always something that breaks that rule and the children have to learn it. So we try, that's what phase five and year one is all about. So that's a really useful place to go to. Also on here, if you go back to the top and how we teach, there's, there's little videos here, but I just highlight the how we teach phase five. That would be a really useful video to watch. They're only usually a few minutes, but I think it will help you understand phase five a little bit more. Um, because that's what we cover mostly in year one. We do a little bit of revisiting this half term, but then we crack on with phase five. And at the end of year one, there'll be a phonic screening check. So in June, there's a government phonic screening check. And if the children are well underway with phase five, they've got a really good opportunity to pass that screening check. It is a little bit of a bit of a, it's a bit of a ridiculous check because it's just reading words and some of them are real and some of them are nonsense words or suedo words so they're made up but we do all of that practice with them and what I'll do is late nearer the time I'll do a workshop for you specifically on the phonic screening check. The other thing that we'd really like to do is invite you in to come and see a phonic session so later this term we're going to invite you in to come and see phonics for yourself so you'll be able to see how that lesson is delivered and the sounds that your children are tackling within phonics. And I hope that, again, will be really useful for you. So we'll share that date with you. And I think that's the end of all my information and the place to go for the resources. But like I say, it's really important if you've got any questions that you ask, please speak to the class teachers or, like I say, you can always email email myself I'm more than happy to answer anything has anybody got any questions now just gonna stop sharing my screen now I had this with the FS just like silence 
No, I don't think so. I think it's all good from my perspective. I covered it all, did I? Yeah. Yeah. Will you be, will you be will you be sending a record now? Yes. I'll, I'll, well, we'll be popping it on the website, but I'll let oh, you know. It's it's on the website. I'll probably pop that on a newsletter so you can then you That's can great. listen to me as much as you like. <laughs> but I'll, what I'll do is I'll share the presentation as well, so you don't have to watch the video. You can just have a look at the presentation. Thank you. Perfect. Any other questions? No. Not from me. Well, thank you for coming. And if you'd rather ask separately, then please do. And when I've uploaded the video, then I'll let you know that it's available to watch and, and the presentation as well. But thanks very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Stephanie. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.